All right, OpenAI has a new tool called Canvas. We're going to tag them because Lady 8 is doing some cool stuff, but we need uh, some updates to how OpenAI ChatGPT Canvas works. Lady 8, let's uh, talk about what you're doing. Okay, so I'm, um, I'm writing a driver for this chip, which is green, so you can't see it very well. Uh, the VCNL 4200, it's a light and proximity sensor, and um, the thing that really is annoying about writing drivers for these sensors is they have like five trillion little like knobs and like tweak the distance, high threshold, low ALS, postscript, whatever. So I thought I would use um, ChatGPT to help me just do all the setters and the getters and the type definums. Um, so one thing about writing Arduino code in ChatGPT, I've done it for a bit, so Canvas is new, but let's go to the, um, the screen, I can show it up. So I usually have the PDF open and I've uploaded the PDF to, to Canvas already. So it knows about the PDF and so I can tell it like, oh, you know, get this register value and it can like look up the numbers. Um, but you're going to, I tend to have three different files that I'm jumping between. So there's the Arduino code that actually does, that runs on the microcontroller that does the setting and getting testing. So each function, I try running it and then I check the return and when I write the code I have this debug you know and, and the Arduino library you know background I have a debug of the I squared C commands being sent and so I can like do a triple check to make sure that what ChatGPT wrote is the right address and bits because it's like so easy to get those messed up so I'm looking at like the raw hex here and correlating it with the data sheet um, so I have to write this test code that's run in Arduino and then um, for the library itself there's a header file which has all like the C++ like pound defines and the class and eventually you'll have the oxygen, but just to keep it clean, I don't. And then um, the C++ file itself, which has the setters and getters. And you can see this is like super repetitive, boring, like twiddly code um, to just do all the type def setting and getting. So Canvas is really nice and fast. I like that you have the file open, but let's say I want to add um, a new like setter getter for a new register so okay next up let's do the setter getter for um ALS uh ALS threshold uh high yeah which is two bytes wide Please update the CPP file first. So what what is it, I have a trouble with them kind of like learning how to do is it loses all the context because I have three files going on and it like if all my code was in one file it would be awesome but because I have to have the header the C++ file like when I say add a C++ file it like deletes the entire history so there was like all this other code the code it wrote is great but um, it, you know, I basically have to kind of know where it would go. And then if I then say, okay, now update the header file. Um, if I ask it to do the header file first, it gets really confused. Like it kind of went into a loop of like, I don't know where the header file is. The header file, it like somehow remembers the whole thing. So that's, so that's fine. What should it do? Well, so what would be really nice is that if there were tabs here and I could give it, like I tried to give it the name, I was trying to tell ChatGPT like, this is the header file, but instead it keeps renaming it. And every time it updates it, it renames it. And so if I close this and I go to like the file tab, I have like a new file for each one. Whereas what would be cool is if I had like tabs or multi-view and it would just like edit the file. I mean, I know it's a kind of a wrapper over GPT and it's here. Because what happened is like the C++ file would get, like you got overwritten, like something just really weird happened. Like there's multiple files with the same name and this C++ file actually ended up being replaced with the Arduino code. Like it just got like super wigged out. Like the code itself is fine. It's just the file management is funky. Um, what would be neat is you know, here, I would love there to be, like, this is copy, and I thought this was, like, window select. I wish there was, like, little, like, tabs, and I could just click between, like, the header and the CPP file, and then whatever is selected, I say, add the pound defines to this file, it'll do that. 
or if I say like add the test code to this file, I'll have the INO file selected. So like having you just be a little bit more aware of like the file names and the different functions that they have. Um, Cause the guy's like, oh, add a, create like a type def and it did it in like the wrong file. So it's like, it's very fast, but um, yeah, I think just like, a, like the file management, if it was just like a little bit more file systemy, I think it would be awesome. Okay, right. Well, in the post and everything that goes with this, we'll uh, include the last big video we did of writing drivers and more with ChatGPT. Um, how do you? I feel love like, like I love the by the way the formatting is amazing. I love the color yeah, formatting. Yeah, I was so, going to ask. So like, good. Yeah, because you're you're one of the few people that's really using it for you know code partnership. I guess for no other better term. Um, how is the speed on um, the latest model? It's super fast. Okay. It's super fast and it's not making mis you know, it's not mis mixing hallucinations. Of course I check everything by hand, but it's like, it's it's much speedier. I think, like one of the things, you know, people who like write, as you get to larger and larger programs, you know that it like tries to rewrite the whole thing. So I see it when it does the insertion stuff, it's great, because like, I don't want it to rewrite all the old code. I just want it to add two new functions. But again, because I'm bouncing between three files, I think yeah. it like reloads the whole file and retypes it. It might, do, it might just need the concept of uh, it's file It's a semi, yeah. semi context of like, I want you to work on this file. I mean, yeah. I'm sure it's coming. And I don't mind, like I copy and paste it into, you know, X Emacs because I'm like a freak. And that's working out great. Okay. Um, I'm not expecting like full IDE integration. Do you want an X Emacs interface to? I, I'm like the one. I'm like the only yeah. one, right? Yeah. Like I want like you know, at Meta X like add yeah. code here. I don't right. think anyone else who uses XEMAX, but um, anyways, cool. I don't know. There's something wrong with All that. All right. Well, we'll get this it's out. It's working out though, right? We'll, we'll get this out to the OpenAI <laughs> folks, and I know they like to hear feedback from people that are like really using the tool in a very specific way. So I'll tell you um, the thing about XEMAX. Unlike Visual Studio or like whatever code, blah, 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 editor or like Eclipse, it's never crashed on me and deleted all my files. Yeah. I've never had it like crash and lose everything I worked on. It's always, and it auto saves. So like, and it's okay. very fast. Okay. I don't even know why I'm defending myself. Well, because it's the internet and you're just going to have an unlimited surface area of attacks no matter what you do and what you choose. Get used to it. All right. Are you used to All right, it? Back to coding. Okay, back to coding. Bye bye.